today, and I'd like to note that although I sit here wearing a Coast Guard uniform, I testify before you as the Director of Operations for the United States Co Southern Command, one of six DOD regional combatant commands uh, responsible for all U.S. military operations in a region comprising Central and South America and the Caribbean. I note that I was privileged to follow Vice Admiral Abel in this position at Southern Command as he departed for his new responsibilities, his current responsibilities as the Deputy Commandant for Operations. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this hearing on behalf of Admiral Fowler, the Commander of the United States Southern Command. Having a Coast Guardsman in this position is unique among, among combatant commands, and it demonstrates the vital partnership between the U.S. Southern Command and the Coast Guard, with the Coast Guard providing almost all of the maritime assets in the U.S. Southern Command region. These Coast Guard assets conduct a full suite of missions supporting United States Southern Command, ranging from counter-narcotics, detection and monitoring, national defense, humanitarian assistance, security cooperation, and training exercises. The Coast Guard also conducts critical maritime force protection for our Joint Task Force Guantanamo Bay that is responsible for the safe, legal, and humane treatment of law of war detainees. Simply put, the Coast Guard is U.S. Southern Command's maritime service provider. Although our partnership with the Coast Guard is most relevant to today's hearing, I'd be remiss if I didn't highlight the incredible partnerships we enjoy with other U.S. government agencies, as well as with willing and capable partner nations throughout the Western Hemisphere. These partnerships are particularly strong with respect to the detection and disruption of illegal narcotics. Nowhere are these partnerships on greater display than at Joint Interagency Task Force South, JADF South, in Key West. 20 partner nations and representatives from 16 agencies sit side by side in what has become the model for cooperation toward the common goal of stemming illicit trafficking. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you personally for taking the time to visit JADF South recently to see how, how effective, how firsthand uh, we are effective in pulling together all of our strengths. I invite all members of the committee to come down and see what a great collaborative international and interagency work uh, that JADF South is and the great work that is being done in collaboration. I would also invite and encourage you to visit our partner nations to get an in-depth understanding of the importance of the region. I can tell you that others recognize its importance. China and Russia are here in a big way, and I say here purposely. The Western Hemisphere is our shared neighborhood. We are connected with our regional partners in every domain, land, air, sea, space, cyber, and values. The challenges that threaten our neighborhood are the same challenges that directly threaten our homeland, and the opportunities in this hemisphere are all of ours to foster and share. The Commandant of the Marine Corps said it best and most powerfully, I think. As the Chinese established presence in countries throughout this hemisphere, he noted, and I quote, they are inside our interior lines. So how do we counter that? We have to be good partners, and that includes being good partners in the counter-drug arena. The drug trade is connected to all facets of security. It creates instability in the region, undermines the rule of law, and corrupts governments and institutions. It creates a permissive environment that allows state and non-state actors to conduct malign activities that threaten the peace and prosperity of the region. The Coast Guard regularly commits more assets to the counter-drug mission than is required through our annual force allocation effort. The Coast Guard's commitment really enables the successes that you'll hear about today. Our partner nations are also in this fight with us. Colombia has increased its eradication efforts by over 50% since last August. They prevent COCA from ever reaching the transit zone, ever from ever starting its journey north. Partners in the transit zone like Panama, Costa Rica, and Guatemala are taking the equipment and the training the U.S. provided them and are taking cocaine off the high seas by the ton. Last year, partner nations directly contributed to 700 American lives saved. Not only is this our neighborhood, but it offers a high return on investment that directly impacts our own national security. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Admiral. Mr. Patton. Chairman Maloney, Ranking Member Gibbs, members.